good Monday morning. I uh, hope everybody had a good weekend. I did. Spent the uh, weekend up at Nashville at, at a NASCON. Had a good convention. Um, it's always interesting at conventions what is going to sell. Um, as I tell people, I've never taken the same products and even had the same setup at any one convention. So it's always, I feel like I'm going to Vegas and, you know, am I going to bet on red or black or, you know, whatever. Um, ended up doing, doing well. Uh, sold a, a lot of monument paint, uh, which is interesting. Over the last couple of years, I've been carrying it and taking the, the big boxes, the sets, and people are like, oh, what's this? This um, weekend, I'm starting to see some changes in attitudes. Of It's more, hey, you carry monument paint? I need to get some more. So it's good to see. Uh, in fact, I think uh, ReaperCon actually the next a week from tomorrow to go to ReaperCon. So scrambling to get uh, some more monument paint because uh, I think I'm going to take it. I think it's gotten a They've done very well. I know Adepticon last couple of years selling it. And I think it's uh, they definitely made a name for themselves. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is what I'm sitting here unpacking. I am going to repack because I'm going down to a really small booth 10 by 10. Trying to, actually I'm going to draw it out. Probably even maybe set it up because going for that far for that long and having a small booth, I need every foot to have something in it that I can sell. So once again, uh, it's that old what I'm what's going to sell. Um, I need to look at what other vendors are going to be there. Probably just pretty much the same ones. Because that, that's one good thing is try not to, to cross um, what the word is. But uh, don't take the same thing that someone else has. Um, right now, it's going to be Shadow's Edge Tufts. It's going to be Monument Paint. going to take, uh, should be getting my War Crow stuff in. And it releases the end of the, the month, I think the 29th. So I'll have that there for release uh what else am i gonna take man that's probably got enough room i'm taking some stuff for uh kurt steven finisher building authority he's got some bust some tall and some basically 40 plus millimeter miniatures i'm gonna take a, a some of those uh so i still got room for some more stuff so, and the problem is I'm running into is because I'm leaving Tuesday, uh, there's not many things I can actually end up ordering to actually get in stock to take. So, pretty much today, today's decision day on that stuff. So, I'll definitely be spending the rest of the afternoon um, doing that. So, how was the convention? Good. Um, they had a 116 for Age of Sigmar tournament, which was good, and that was right in front of me. It's fun to watch. Uh, kind of, uh, it's loud. I think my ears are still ringing. Not as bad as some conventions, but it is still still loud. Uh, and I don't think they had the AC on Friday night or or what. Uh, Saturday morning throughout most of the morning, it was a little warm in there. It finally cooled down in the afternoon. But, uh, yeah, uh, good to see other games going pretty strong. Had, and sorry, I'm still, honest, a little hoarse. Thinking about commission, especially when it's loud. You tend to have to talk loud. Anyway, Battletech, uh, Flames of War, Gold Action, um, Kings of War, Lord of the Rings, which 
I was impressed. Probably had, I don't know, 20 people. Good looking tables, great looking miniatures. Had a big uh, MCP tournament. Uh, some more guys went up there for that. Uh, I think they said they had 64 for that. Oh, sure. Still, uh, jet lag from Nashville. No, it's it wasn't bad, but uh, always some long days uh, with the conventions. Good to sleep in your own bed. Um, of course, nothing compared to next week. It's going to be, uh, yeah, long, long week. But I, I'm actually looking forward to it. Um, see what else. Several cool historical miniature games. Um, always interesting discussion. You know, I'm trying not to cough on you guys. Like I said, my throat's way dry. Um, there were actually empty tables Saturday afternoon for the historical for the historical players. Once again, some great looking games, but uh, it's just, and I was going to talk to several people about it. Uh, once again, kudos to the people in Ashcon for bringing in all, especially the MCP tournament and the Age of Sigmar, something kind of out of the norm for historical um, miniature convention. So for the think about that, they had 150 people this between the MCP and the Age of Sigmar, which which is great. Um, you think about that probably pays for the space for the convention. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's it, it's great to see some of the same games. Um, I know that's the reason a lot of people go to these type of conventions. They play the big convention games. But, um, I don't know. I'm sure we'll have the same discussion at, at Huracan. And, and, yes, in some ways it's getting much better. But you still, um, you know, I think it's a challenge for them to fill up the tables. Um, I know we're probably end up running three or four games at Huracan. Didn't run any at NASCON um, because it was basically just me. Um, but no, how do you get interest, interested? <sighs> I was flying up and still started talking. Uh, how do you get people interested in historicals and which historicals? Um, I kind of seen a resurgence of Saga. It's going to skirmish game. Um, I think um, maybe that's the way to go. Smaller, I don't say skirmish at war games, but just smaller miniature count, smaller tables. Um, yeah, you still need the big, you know, six foot plus table. Um, it was cool to see the, I don't, I want to say 28 mil scale. Um, ironclad Civil War game. I don't know, twenty foot table. Yeah, probably twenty foot. They were playing on um, big old ships. That was cool to see, but it, it's still interesting to watch people. Is once again, some of those games can take a while to play, especially in the beginning. Oh, I was so sorry, guys. I guess I need a nap, but uh, but watching them play, uh, they definitely got to be fast paced, easy, easy to uh, play games. I don't know how many they had, at least a dozen guys, if not more, playing that game. So you imagine all these guys trying to get around the table. Um, it was cool, and they were having fun. So good for them. Um, I kind of walked through the flea market, uh, talked to a couple guys, but even that, uh, just not, not overly impressed with all the stuff that was there. There was a, a couple cool items. I didn't, didn't buy anything. 
<laughs> I did talk to a couple people and some stuff. But, yeah, uh, it's interesting. Um, I just, you know, I got some thoughts I'm going to share back to people at MASHCON and then definitely want to go to HerCon um, about the historical conventions. I, I like it. I, it's good to see that stuff on the table. But, um, yeah, how do, how do you grow the hobby? I know I've had that discussion a uh, million times. So, But um, it's good to see people. Uh, some people like that I see once a year. You know, some people I see a couple times a year. But, yeah, good to see new faces. And I am missing a miniature out of my case. Interesting, interesting. Um, I have to ask Mike about that. Um, so yeah, I need to go finish unpack and start repacking. Um, it's got a, as I mentioned, a bunch of tournaments coming up. Uh, definitely looking forward to the War Crow, listen to more videos dropping up there and back. Um, some really good videos by Ash Barker, the Gorilla Miniatures, on he does, uh, with one of her friends that actually owns a shop up in Canada. I forget where they're out of Toronto. I don't say, but up in Canada, the definitely kind of more, um, industry talk, uh, shop talk. Uh, they had a, a really good one about, um, starter sets and more specifically what games workshop is doing now. Um, Actually, you had some of the same questions they brought up and concerns when the last the Age of Sigmar stuff um, dropped. So it's interesting, I, you know. Games Workshop, there's no doubt the trendsetter, and others will follow. Um, I do think two player starters are very important to games, um, and there's really fine balance between the price point and what you put in there. I think you need to have any, everything in there to play the game, to get the game on, on the table, but keep the price down, which is walking a fine line. Um, I think you do need to follow up with expansions and back up to that. So if a player does think this is cool, they can turn around and buy more almost right then and there. Um, feed that frenzy because there's no time like the first time or a couple times a person plays a game to really get them interest in into the hobby into that game so and, and as i say you only get one chance to make that first impression so i think it's very very important games workshop you know they do that well but once again how they're doing that, you know, basically with the Age of Sigmar 4th edition, they've got almost four different boxes out there. And like I said, Ash, they're going to really good detail on on that. And, uh, you know, I get where they're coming from, but it does make it, I think, harder for sh smaller shops like me. This in scary, instead of and they mention it instead of carrying one product, you now should carry four. So, your cost, even if they were roughly all the same, which they're not, um, is quadrupled. Your shelf space is quadrupled, yeah, you know. So, it, it is interesting, anyway. I'll try to post a link to their video and mine, um, because I think it's a re really good discussion. Um, kind of two-part you know good what is a good two-player starter introductory start and then what games workshop so really solid discussion throughout their video see so yeah um i think corvus belly speaking of that and war crow they've done a good a really good job overall 
with their what they're having and i have not got my hands on it yet but from the videos and everything i've seen and read on warcrow with their initial box um they are coming out with the expansions next month which is good and what's is that two-edged sword too i would almost like for them to have that available now but once again for a shop like or any shop that's just more product you have to pick up now on a brand new especially like this brand new game Ooh, that's you know you're going back to vegas um if you got a hit you don't have enough product if no one likes it no one buys it and ends up being a dead game which i don't think it will you're sitting with all the stock uh, uh, that's always a challenge so um but yeah uh we won't be dealing warcro at reapercon which in just the turn time to get this stuff painted and i'm not even sure when i'm going to get get it in hopefully i have it by next monday um but um we definitely will be going for the rest of the year to conventions doing demos i am working on some cool boards this is one of the pieces i'm printing we've got some other walls and stuff i got to, got to sit down and focus focus on what exactly i want to do i definitely want to do a little two by two demo board and then it plays on three by three so maybe even start on a bigger three three by three board so between packing and doing all that stuff yeah i'm gonna stay busy anyway um i am about to lose my voice again or not lose it but it's definitely getting scratchy so um drink a lot of water i think with that guys i'm gonna um, to call it a day uh for the video so i hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you next time take care